welcome to the totally awesome fishing show i am as you can see out here in the woods but although it's not fishing it's fishing orientated it's a double whammy of jobs several people have asked us what rod what reel what terminal gear and i thought you know what i'm going to go up to the famous the world famous pallet cabin and uh, i can run through it there and i fancy just having a break to be honest because i do all that work on mike's ta outdoors i don't ever get really chance to enjoy it because it's just like building all the time so i'm out here deep in the darkest woods of southern England. I've got my very heavy backpack on because I've got tools there. I've actually got to fit some guttering to what we built years ago, which is the old pallet cabin. It's world famous cabin built out of pallet wood. My God, it's had some views. I think one of them's had, I want to say five million views, maybe more than that. Ridiculous, really. And do you know what? It's still standing. Why not enjoy it? It's also got in there a nice cooker. It's got one of those G-stoves in there. Um, what can I say? It's a nice bit of peace and quiet. Too windy to fish. Beautiful day, but a bit too windy to fish. So I've got to fit this gutter in. I've got to try and have a cook up inside. And I've got to run through some tackle with you guys and show you some of the gear that we use. Get off of me, Smith. I've had enough of that. Well, thank goodness Mike's brought the oven down. Let's open the, open the window up. It's going to be a light in, the, in here. I don't know what you'll get with this camera, boys. I really don't know. We've got some logs here. You see, the reason I want to put the guttering in, everything else is fine. No, no, it hasn't rotted out. But when we built it, we wanted to do it with absolutely, by paying nothing. And all this, all this is built by pallet wood. Now, if you want to look at these, go on TA Outdoors, Mike's channel, and look at the various pallet wood builds, one of which oh, is just doing huge numbers, and it's a sort of speeded up version of the whole thing. So, people say, we put the roof the wrong way. Yes, we, we, we know that. We know that that's the way the tin fits the pallet. We know it's the wrong way. That's all we had. It would have been easy to go to the Home Depot, wouldn't it, and just buy the right stuff. And it's sort of cheating. We've got it from scrap literally from scrap so what i want to do is run a bit of gutter in here because the water comes down it runs and i think it sort of trickles down there and then what it does here it hits this board okay and then occasionally it goes inside it's only when it's lashing with rain yeah everything's all okay around here i might have a, a rake and a tidy up that's that's good and we got the wood store it is look dad and make that one and it's absolutely bone dry i've got a ton of wood which is annoying because I've actually brought a load of wood with me. Kind of daft bringing wood to a forest, isn't it, really? It's like that saying, what is it? Don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Don't bring wood to a forest. But anyway, I've got my floodlight. I'm gonna get set up here, table and stuff. Get the fire going, get the oven going, but I've got to do that, uh, that gutter in first, cut it to size, and I, it might trickle here. See, I bent it up there. As I say, it should go the other way and the water runs off. If we put it the other way, it means we have to cut the sheets. And of course, then it's not going to fit the cabin. The idea is to do it for nothing. And people do have a bit of a problem. Some people have a problem with the fact that this famous pallet cabin, which has several million views, is in fact still standing. Everything's all intact. No, it hasn't rotted out. It's up on blocks. They need to watch all the full build. I'll tell you what. It's pretty good fun staying in here. So, like my one man, I can't say hunting cabin, filming cabin. Right, give me five minutes, guys. Gonna do the tackle later on. I'm gonna try and do this guttering now, get it out of the way. Well, I'll just get 
just tidied up a bit. We haven't been up here for a while. I think we a couple of weeks or so. We didn't bother to rake up then. But uh, I do like it nice and neat and tidy. Makes a proper camp of it, doesn't it? And we leave a rake here at the back of the back of the cabin, the old pallet cabin. World famous. Did you know it's had more views than some of the professional cabins? And the reason being, anybody can do it. And here you can see, Mike's already been filming. We could have an open fire, okay? We could have an open fire, not a problem. But that stove in there is just unbelievable, and that is the stove for me. So over here is Mike's considerable log store. And wait for this, boys. He cut all that by hand over a period of years. This is his latest shelter he's built. I'll just show it to you briefly. It's up on his channel. It's a uh, whatever shelter. I don't know. I like this stuff. I don't even know the name of that fern. Whatever that is. Fur. But he's got it up on his channel. So if you want to look, all you people interested in the outdoors, which I am. Oh yeah. Actually it feels pretty cozy. <laughs> but somebody said, you're like an hors d'oeuvre waiting for a bear to come along if you if you're in Canada or Alaska, but it's pretty pretty uh, pretty cool. Keep the cold coming off if it's just straight cold in the winter. And I, like, you know, I quite like the idea of the open plan view. You know, it's nice. Have a fire down the curve. Oh, he's had a fire there. He's bought the rocks uh, over for having a fire there. I guess yeah, just burning on top. So you want to see the actual full build on that? Check out his channel. See if I can get going. It's so nice and peaceful, it's a job. I want to get the cooking side going to get that tackle out, but I've got to do the work first, just the way it is. You can't beat a few power tools. Never mind about all this natural stuff. If you think I'm going to put s screws into this wood using my teeth or something, forget it. Cut here. I love this sack. Put it on the fire as well. Now I bought my trusty floodlight here because I don't know what this camera does in low light. All those who thought it, oh it's rotting out, it's gonna rot out. Uh no, actually two years later it hasn't. Right, let's get the table up. Hopefully the legs are here. Let's put this down there. And there indeed are the legs. There's always a worry in case somebody turns up and goes, oh, I'll use that for firewood. Oh no, please don't do that. There we go. Goes into the slots. There it is, it's just all bone dry, isn't it? I'm gonna put that underneath there. Right, I'm gonna put my grub up here ready anyway. There is that little beauty. We'll be talking to you later. Look at this, Michelin star, Michelin star here. This is what I'm going for people. Pizzas. Oh yes, I really know how to rough it. Crispy salad with all the sauces. Tea milk sugar. Where can I stick that up here? I just bought one hip size, uh, I don't know what that is, a litre. That's not going to fit up there, is it? Put it there. Yeah, let's slide this stuff along. Put that there for now. Put your tops on. Yes! All you bushcrafters can gather that Graham is not going to die of starvation. The ultimate survivor. As you come, clips, clips, clips. Ten and saw. More clips. I hope I bought the right size. The Highly popular miniature Bowie knife. Extremely sharp. I sharpened it. This sort of sharp. Gosh. Hopefully this is going to work, people. Otherwise I've carried all this drain pipe into the forest for nothing. It's just a hunch. But, uh, I can cover up the edging. We have to. We couldn't give you flush because it might move off. So we'd have to a little overspill at the side there, just like there for it to stand on. I just want to run a piece of gutter in there.
Golly, it's going to be a warm one. I thought it was cold this morning. Don't forget, if you want to support us, get in touch with the website. Mike's got TA fishing, he's got TA outdoors, he's doing the clothing. And these ones are hoodies. You got, I think you can do sweatshirts, hoodies. Lovely. I don't like walking down streets, I've got to admit with this. It's not because I look like a bank robber, it's because I don't like the ears, I can't hear people behind me, it's unnerving. But when you're fishing, say you're out on a beach, open water, big reservoir, big lake, oh my God, it's so warm. All right, let's get the first clip in. Hopefully it don't go through the stove chimney inside. Oh my God. Slightly crooked, but the water's gonna come in here. If it does rush over the top, go down here from these gullies and hopefully, I might put another clip in there, come out here and just miss the edge of our uh, base ground there, base, base plate that we're standing on. I might fire another clip in there. Well, I wanna pull this in there and I think the gap of the clip, clip there is not gonna go in tight enough. So I'm drilling using my special super duper knife. Quite an old one, this one. Grind a hole, straighten the edge of the plastic and then hopefully, ah, oh, dropped in my foot nearly. I can pull that end in there, and if it runs over here, I think it's running down here, coming over this kink. See, we had we bent this up at the last uh, place we moved this from one other forest to this one, from a deciduous to the uh, pine forest here. Let's get this in. That's got to be better. That's got to be better. Because you can't run over the top here because we bent it up the lips, but I'm figuring it's running down here, coming out there. So, with a bit of luck, that's going to miss the outside perfectly. Going to run some down the sides and then, that's right, get that old stove fired up. All right, let me just get this screw in. Oh, that's perfect. That is perfect. Oh, do you know what I think I'm going to change that, guys? I've cut a flange and angle on the top of that to go with the slope of the roof. And if water comes over here, runs down here, I'm just going to check well, before I really start doing the rest of the roof if the water does run down. Worth checking first. You know the saying, boys. Measure twice, cut once. And then put the microphone in the gutter where you're going to pour the water. And then have no water for drinking. Testing, testing, testing. <laughs> Even the drips. Mind you, a bit tight. Let me, let me show you. It's a bit tight, but... Perfect. And the drips, I'll show you at the bottom, you miss the wood and go on the brick. So do you know what? I've got that so tight there, I'm going to take that clip off, use the, uh, the knife and get it tight under there and then I know I'm okay. Oh yeah, I forgot to move the microphone. Uh oh, sorry about that Mike. Sorry about that Mike. Mike. So folks, I, uh, I've got it all the way round now. We've checked here. I'll put one here so that this one can either run this way, if it does whoosh over there in a great big rush, it goes right down the end here. A couple of brackets, a locking screw there. It goes over here. If this one runs down this edge, which is a sort of dry end, but I put it there anyway, I just jammed it at an angle. If it trickles down here, it's gonna shoot straight off the end or down there. Either way, it's going to miss the edge of the base. Same round the back. Who made that ladder? A Viking? This one shoots out past the end of the base. Yes, you're right. This one shoots out past the end of the base. Oh look, somebody's laid the table in there. Isn't that sweet? Right, let's get that fire going. That's the best bet. This thing. This old G stove, boys, is unbelievable. It looks like a builder site. Now, don't forget, I put my tools with me. This is reclaimed. We still have not spent a single penny. This is reclaimed um, drain pipes that I've had from years off an old garage. <laughs> I've probably had it 15 years. At least, it's, at least it's got used now. Oh, that 
I've got enough kindling wood here to get it started. I hope. I brought some really, really dry stuff with me, and that is generally the uh, the way to get this guy going. Started with dry. Trust me, it doesn't take much to get it going. And trust me, got a bit right at the back. Once it catches, it generally does not take much to get this this whole stove a bubbling. Man, it, it's, it, this is there's not often I'm impressed with things. Really, honestly, just think, oh, it's another gimmick. No, 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 this thing ain't a gimmick. This is, whoever thought of this, brilliant. I know there's loads of variations, but this particular, I think, is, must be all stainless G stove. This is the kitty. The last uh, recipient in here wasn't particularly clean. He obviously let it burn out. No names mentioned, obviously. Didn't bother cleaning it. I dare say he was filming, just to give you a hint. I've taken all the ash out. And now, we'll see if we can get it going. Who knows? Don't know what that does. Could be a disaster. Let's shut this. As soon as you shut this door, people, can you see that? Watch those flames there, look, just burning. You shut the door, you open this little valve maximum, it absolutely barrels the uh, oxygen through there and look at the speed of flames you're going to catch at. Got the oven here. And this gets really hot, you can put a water canister around there. It comes with loads of different accessories. These fold, these fold up, obviously we got it there, we got tiles around the side for the heat. And um, out here one hopes. Oh yeah, there you go people. That's the smoke, that's the spark arrestor there. <clears throat> also tells me the wind is somewhere around southerly. So Sam's over there and it's uh, coming up to two o'clock. So in the winter, should go around fairly west the sun. But it looks like we have lift off with the, uh, with the old girl. There we go. I'm gonna have a sweep up in here, get tidied up by which time hopefully it will uh, have picked up a bit. All right people, it's on the go now. That's full open. Look at that, it's burnt the lot. I put this wood on here just to warm it <laughs> and the wood smoking, look at this. It is so hot. So I can afford to tune this down just here, watch. Want it to burn, perfect, perfect, perfect. And you think that's not hot, I'm not going to uh, touch it, I assure you it is. There's the temperature on the oven. Check that out. If I can move a second, you might be able to see that. So it's gone from down here, it's going up. I've got to let that heat up before I put my pizza on there. And before we start going through a bit of the lake is tackle. I've put all the logs here, clean it all out, swept it all out. Got to sweep out here, stack the logs there. Probably use these ones here. I think I might get a couple of candles lit just for ambient lighting. Well, we've got the ambient lighting going there. Little battery pack, nice little lights, got a candle there. We could, we could fill all these up with candles, indeed we have. There's our badger skull, that is a real badger skull from our old camp Badger's Rest. Look at that, that's pretty spooky and that's a deer skull I found somewhere. So we've got our candles, that one looks a bit uh, limited. I'm loaded up there, the temperature is rocketing up here so I feel we're nearly near the uh, pizza cooking. No smoke now. Now see how clean that's burning. Hardly any smoke at all. That's how efficient this is. I'm going to have a quick pour for a brew. Mind you, I've poured most of this testing the drain pipes. So as long as I've got enough for a cup of tea, that's all I worry about. Actually, there's a little wire thing in there that rattles around so people know. And allegedly it stops it all furring up. Who knows? The benefit of that uh, G stove, or indeed any stove, it can just burn out, can't it? You don't have to worry about anything. That should hopefully get going. Right, let's get ourselves set up. I'm going to use a camera light here, folks. And what I'm going to do is extend it and then 
those pizzas won't take long that temperature there temperature here is now up to 150 degrees in that little oven so I think it's getting near the time to put that um, that pizza on we've left all the inside of this pallet cabin natural wood and stain the outside that's ripping that thing now that fire check this stove out I've got to turn it down it's just that's better it's over 150 we're nearly at 200 the table is set and I feel that's time to uh, wait for that kettle to brew right it's home from home isn't it it says eight to ten minutes but wifey assures me that we better let's get this kitty out wow that was good didn't it boys we have got a plate to put it on this knife is so sharp I'm gonna have to cut it to get it in the oven the knife is so sharp I'll probably end up putting the plate in there as well right so what she says is put a bit of tin foil there will you you pizza lovers will possibly know whether this is true or not and she said to stop it sticking put a little bit of this is extra virgin olive oil I don't know how much you're supposed to put on guys a little bit of extra virgin olive oil over the tin foil and that will save it apparently sticking or burning to the silver foil if I put it in on the grill straight in it is going to stick to the grill and Uncle Graham won't be eating anything for those who just tuned in yes we're going to do some tackle talk in a short while but I've done all that guttering out there cleaning up so I am absolutely gonna have something to eat first why shouldn't I, I think I deserve it now one thing I haven't got that's right oven gloves this could be interesting boys in we go it could be interesting that's one in that was relatively painless two in a little bit more wood into the eating the log, the log eating machine I'm going to call this because it just goes through it like you wouldn't believe look at that in there wowie that's pretty hot it's hot Oh, the tea's getting warm as well. As I say, it does come with a its own tea mis machine there. So that's in eight minutes. Somebody, Smith, tell me I'm going to take these out. I've got GP on the mug just in case uh, I forget who my name is. And the years tick past, and one day I won't know what, who I am, where I am, or what I'm doing. So I put my name on the cup just so I don't get a disease of somebody else who might take the cup. I just take a little bit of milk in these sealed up containers and that's all I need when you can get them in the back of your knapsack as well okay while we're waiting for the tea and the pizza first reel is this one now we don't sell tackle we don't ram tackle we're not trying to sell you tackle we're just saying what we use and this is me telling you this is what I use I bought it second hand for 10 pounds I've been very impressed with it it's got a nice drag to it. I like the smooth drag here. Come over there a bit. Look, lovely, lovely smooth drag. I've got to think about, I use it for carp and pike. Put that behind there. Front drag there. A little drag to adjust your bait runner attachment at the back there. And it is called, I haven't got my readers in here. It's dark at candlelight. It's called an Okuma Interceptor. I've got about 15 pound line on it. it says it takes something like I don't know 240 of um, 12 I think it is so obviously the thicker diameter line you put on there the less you're going to be able to put on there I feel 240 yards or so of 12 there's not a carp swimming in England that's going to run me out 240 yards in fact I don't think there's any fish because you just follow the fish don't you around the lake so I don't know what the gear ratio on this one is I'll check it for you gear ratio is 
4.5 to 1. It has double handles here, it's like a counterbalance handle. And it's a nice drake and it's got the bait runner. Now, I have no idea whether these are expensive new or not, I don't know. I've done very well with it. I use it for catfish, big ones, 40 pounds. You know, we had 30, 40 pounders on it. I use it for sea fishing as well. So <clears throat> don't neglect the second hand market because there are some decent reels around there. So I don't even know, maybe it's discontinued, maybe they're new, I have no idea. I have no interest. I bought this second hand for 10 pounds. I've had a lot of fish on it. Now, oh, this is worth looking at people. Thomas the Tank Engine. That's just standing, that is so hot, that's just standing the kettle on the top. That might be a bit, a bit fierce, Graham. Yes, yes, think, think carefully. Think twice, touch once. Carefully remove. And very carefully pour. You cannot beat a fresh brew, and I'm due. So I've like I've got a smaller version of those interceptors. There's no point in me putting that on the top there because it's just going to uh, keep boiling away. Let's let that brew for a minute. Good little reel. Been well pleased with it. I've also got one of these folding spoony things, which comes apart. Another Christmas present. God, I can't tell you how warm it here. In here it is. God, that's about. I think it's approaching 80, <laughs> and that's with the door open. Let's get that brewed. They say to leave a tea bag at least five minutes. Well, it depends, that's in a teapot. To let the tea bag and tea leaves infuse, what they call it, infuse. They say the tea aficionados do say if you take it out too soon, you haven't got the benefit of the flavor in the tea. I don't know if you only have one cup. If I leave it in there for five minutes, it's like drinking a cup of liquefied clay. Two minutes keep my eye on it and I can smell the pieces are doing and I'm on 150 to 200 degrees. Right that's that reel. Another reel I've been really impressed with and I'm quite genuine about this. These are mics. There's a sort of kit he bought I think it was a Sonic and it was a package where you get a rod, a net, oh, two rods, two reels, a rod a bag, landing net, whatever it was. The rods were a bit, bit soft, you know, we've caught loads of carp on them, a bit soft. But this reel, a pair of them he's got of these, I've been very, very impressed. It takes a lot to impress me with the smoothness of the drag and the degrees in which you can apply the pressure on there. Very, very good line too. I think it's, Mike said it's, I think he got it from Gardeners. I think it's Gardeners tackle. Well, we've had it like four years and we're still, you know, we're still catching fish on it. It's still strong. Smooth drag can be adjusted down, has the bait runner attachment at the back, has the double handles as well. But you can get quite, if I screw it down, look, two turns that was, I can still pull off. Doesn't seem to judder too much, you know, with a fish taking line. I've been very impressed with it. I, I see no reason why you shouldn't be able to pick them up either second hand or maybe just as an individual item. It says on it, and it's called a Sonic. 6000 FS Black. Now I don't believe these are hugely expensive but I've been very impressed with this one. Probably for people starting in carp fishing the kit that Mike's got is, is, is perfectly adequate. We've got loads of them. Basically it's me using it to be honest. Mike's so busy with that bushcraft he doesn't go carp fishing much now. He's overnights all in the uh, either the pallet cabin or out in his bushcraft camps. But I've been well pleased with this. Have a look at it. See what you think if you want to try them out. I'm not saying rush out and buy them. We don't sell stuff just saying this is what we're using for our main carp gear. Okay, I think it's time to check the pizzas. Smith's obviously not here. I'm going to keep that wood going for a little bit longer. You need a good supply of wood with the G stove. If you keep it open, it will eat that wood as fast as you can put it in there. It is so efficient, very, very efficient. And another tip, if you're if you've got the um, bit of the back here, which is the hot water tank, that's fine, because that's obviously a huge amount of heat goes up that, that pipe. But it would tend, I find, to burn out the front here. And I think that's because most of the oxygen is at the front. So if you're cooking, let's lock that. If you're cooking back there, say, this tends to be a, a little bit of a lower temperature. So 
if you want to spread, you've got the water tank there and you also a frying pan here, make sure you build this up at the front quite a bit to get the wood so the heat comes up here as well. Those, I believe, are done. Let's check them out and we'll look at some more tackle. I've actually got a pair of these kiddies which might be handy. Let's have a little look. I might have to get the whole tray. That there, boys, is a pizza done to perfection. Oh, yes. And I even got it off. So, lesson number one learned. Get yourself a pair of these tongs. Save yourself. Oh, look at this. People, look at this. Smell that pizza, boy. Smell that pizza. Woo. I love it, me. There's bushcrafting. They're sitting out in the camp, staying overnight. And there's this stove combo. It is, for me, as a senior citizen, a no-brainer. I've nearly got to the five minutes with the tea bag, and it's getting to the mud colour. Ow! Right, you can stay there, my boy. I've sugared, and away we go. This is, I think you'll agree, a candlelit dinner for a king, and I've even got a bit of salad to put with it as well. The wife was right. If I hadn't put the silver paper on, look what would have happened. It would have stuck to the silver paper and I would have been screaming when it touched my fillings. Let's turn the old girl down a bit. It's gonna get too hot in here otherwise. Pizza steam, oh yes. Ouch, that's the bit I didn't oil. My goodness, that does get hot. Okay, out with the special knife. Look at this. Oh, dig in with your fingers, as filthy as they may be, people. Does it really matter? What would you do if you were in a survival situation, honestly? I'm not quite sure where this is going to go. Hang on a second. That knife is sharp. That knife is sharp. Oh, man, look at this, look at this. People wonder why I do this outside stuff. Look, it's outdoors. I'm not some bushcrafting guy. I just like the outdoors. Nothing wrong with that, is there? I should. I may cook that one and take it and have it cold. Well, boys, give me five. I have my lunch, and we'll go through the rest of the tackle. Nice folding knife and fork there. I mean, I'm eat most of that with my fingers. Cheers, everybody. That's hot. <laughs> That is hot. Got my candles going. This has been one of the best builds we ever did, this pallet cabin. And for those of you who haven't seen it, go on to Mike's channel, look up our building with pallets. We've done the pallet cabin, the rebuild of the pallet cabin, the whole thing. Hmm. Do you know what? I don't know why I'm married. Yes. She does do the washing. It's cooking like this, I could look after myself. It needs to be near a fishing lake, and it needs to be near a fishing lake. That would be heaven indeed. Now this one is, well it looks like a giant carp reel. God, some of those carp reels, I could go beach fishing with, they're huge now. This is a beach reel, an Akios beach reel, which I've had quite some time now. Caught a lot of fish on it, nothing really big. Plus side, the very long spool here, so that enables you to lay the line levelly, you know, one, two, three, four, five, all the, all the way down like that. What I call, lay it, level line it, rather than have a narrow spool here, where it'd be flicking and flying off the spool and you know, it kills your distance a bit. So long distance people now tend to use a longer, slightly coned spool. The downside I find, and this is a good reel, it's got a lovely big ball grip there, to, you know, plenty to get hold of. You can grab hold, get a fistful of the reel handle, crank and wind, crank and wind, crank and wind. And occasionally there's even a fish on there. 
Uh, gear ratio, not that fast. I don't know what it says because I haven't got my glasses. Most of it's worn off. I've, I've used it that much. I've got a shock leader on there, about 50 pounds. It's what he call his spinning wheel in America, or we call them fixed spools. Because the reason being, it is a fixed spool, and the line is laid around the spool by this bail arm, like this. So they call them a spinning wheel in the States. I don't really know why, because not much that spins. They spin with them when they you know use them, but they don't actually... Nothing spins, does it? The only bit that spins is this bail arm. So this is a fixed spool. It's fixed. The line is laid on up and down with an oscillation. You can see it going up and down. You see the reel. It's all for beginners, all for beginners. So these, these are quite a decent reel. Now I would put this as not being a really big fish reel. And that's the honest truth. I'm trying to tell you guys the truth. The reason being, because it is such a long spool there, okay, like that, it's on, maybe I can show you, a very long spindle. If I can get this off without losing, oh, there you go. It's on a nice long spindle. Now, when you wind and you, say, let's say you've got a load of weed on the end, which happens, heavyweight, or you might be lucky enough to have a nice big heavy fish on the end, you're winding and you're sort of cranking under pressure. I can feel stuff start to move in there. Now, it's not broken on me, but then I haven't had a huge fish on it yet. So I think the longer the spool, means the longer the spindle inside, if that makes sense, has a nice drag set into it, but a little bit middle of the road, small, medium fish, that sort of size, but I do like it. And listen, it's not even been serviced and I've had it years. Look, beautiful. Rinse them in fresh water first. So that's one of the Akios reels. Second one, I've actually put the other pizza in there, boys. Let's take a little breather. If you people want me to talk about tackle and terminal rigs or whatever like this, in the fun of a camp, as long as I'm doing a bit of a job up here, I don't want to come up here and sit here like a lemon, do I? But as long as I've got something to do for Mike up in the pallet cabin, we could make this somewhere to come and talk about tackle. I can cook something, it's not a problem for me, I don't mind coming in the forest. I tell you what, it beats the pants out of having a flask and some sandwiches that have been cooking in the sun. Right, now this kitty is an Akios, probably won't even read this one. But it's just a heavy version. I've got no chance. You guys out there know that Akios, look them up. They probably do several wheels. Now this one is a shallower spool. Will not cast so far, right? It's a much, much heavier build. A much heavier build. I've used this for some for a pretty lumpy fish. And I use this one, wait for this, boat fishing as well. I've got braid on it, which we'll talk of in a minute. So I've got no shock leader on there because I'm using, I think I've got 50 pound braid on here. Quite like 40. But this kitty is the same sort of ball fitting there. See that same ball fitting? But the drag graduation, it goes down to, I don't know, 20, 30 kilos of drag on there. Something you never use in England. Look. And look, I'll tell you what, it'll cut me before I pull it off. It's still smooth. So this is 100% a big fish reel. It's heavy. It's got that weight of... I'm going to say quality about it. Again, I've not had it serviced. Let's get that loose bit out of the way. I love braid when it tangles. Same thing, fixed ball. But remember, a shallower spool. Now, I do use this beach fishing, don't get me wrong. But I've got braid on there, not nylon, so the finer diameter picks up the extra distance, so I still get a good distance. Now, this kitty, I can crank and wind and lock that drag up, and you can pull so hard, you'll either snap the line or you'll lose the fish or you'll tear the hook or you'll straighten the hook. This has a huge amount of drag on it. So that's an Akios. And again, we're not selling them. These are just reels that we've been using for some years. We thought we'd let you know. So two there for beach guys, one for very big fish, one for small to medium, uh, regular open beach fishing, I'm going to call it. I'm about to check my second batch of pizzas, which I'm going to take those home because they were very, very tasty. We could do cookery programs here as well. No, no, they go, no, we only want fishing. Oh, look, people, come on, come on. You know, so I'm going to take that home. There's a fair chance I'll, it's, not get, it's not going to get home, is it? This oven's ridiculous. I think we can do what we must do with Mike at some stage. I let that cool. I quite like cold pizza. Look, you've got different racks. We could take this one out and that top one, and we could do a mini roast in there. You'd have to sit here for two hours feeding the fire, but... Brilliant piece of kit, boys. A brilliant piece of kit. Right, still on the beach scene. Beginners again. What do you say is your best lead fishing gram? They're not cheap, but they are very, very good. 
They're called impact leads. For those who don't know, they're a grip lead, and you put your, those legs into those little slots there. You hear it click? You cast out, it digs in the sand or the seabed, and then when you want to wind in, they ping out and pop out like that, okay? They're very good because I find these cast like a bullet because the shape of them is like the World War II bomb type, and trust me, they cast. And then what you do is you hook, put your hook in here, just there, and then when it impacts, the water goes up in these slots and pops that lid up here, this little cone goes up, and that pushes your hook bend out, so it releases your rig. It doesn't tangle in the air. So look, I use any amount of old leads I can expendables, but when I really, honest to God, want some decent distance, then I, and I know I'm gonna get my gear back, I don't wanna cast these kiddies over rough, rough ground for big conga. I use an impact lead. So there you go, guys. They are not cheap, but they are about the top of the line over here in the UK, and they cast like a missile. In contrast, a long distance lead without the grip would be the similar sort of shape, but it's called a long tail. You see this here's got like a long tail to it. And what happens is it gets you the extra distance because it doesn't waggle through the air and kill distance. This tail acts like a sort of a tail fin, if you like, and it keeps the lead tracking straight through the air, therefore very aerodynamic. So people want to know, you can get them look up here as long as this, just straight wire, that's all it is. Very often people make their own and make a long, what they call a long tail lead here, and they get good distance with it. That is more for distance casting. So a little tip for the beginners out there. Still, still on with beach fishing. One of the guys, one of our supporters sent me a knife. We did have a PO box number, but we had to close it because they were like Chinese companies trying to send us, I don't want to say junk, but you know what I'm saying, just because they wanted free publicity. So we knocked that one straight on the head. This one is bright. I've lost so many little bait knives that, you know, you'd, you want a clean cut and this is bright orange, okay? It has a little lever there. I'll see if I can look, get my other knife there. See that? Can you see that moving? That pops over just like this. Obviously you don't need two knives to do it. I'm just doing this for the photograph. I do it with my nail. They are quite stiff, pop. So it's a safety sheath. You can wash out the inside because it's got all these holes in there like that. It's got a bottle opener. Not as many, it's all ring pull cans nowadays. You can sharpen it, make it very sharp, and it's got a descaler there, which I don't use because I don't descale fish because I put most of mine back. If I did want to descale a fish, I would use that one at the back. But that is very sharp, and you can check in your tackle shop for these as well. And they've got a safety sheath, and of course, bright orange like that. It's got to be good, isn't it? I like the way it locks on as well, and that way you don't lose the sheath as well. Let's move along. People ask us what's been, what, probably our most successful lure. It's not the year, probably the last few years. And it's been the trusty sidewinder. Okay, now you can catch freshwater pike on these. You can re-rig them. This is a giant one. I bought this one just to show you because I figured for the camera being wide angle, it will show it better. Sidewinders, top lures, Pollock, Bass, Ling, you know, they are a good lure, but their weedless one, their weedless lure is good. We have definitely caught more pollock fishing off the shore or dinghy fishing, pulling the lure through the reef, through the snags, the kelp, anything like that. We've caught more with the weedless lure and it works like this. There's a lure, it's got a big paddle tail there and that does the wiggling, okay? So normally you'd have a hook, you can have your hook coming out the bottom with the lure or come out the top, but it's fixed, isn't it? So if you start going through kelp beds and weed beds and rocks and stuff like that and you're bringing it back up it can snag with a weedless it's got a slight inward per turning or inward point there if you can see that so you don't cast it out like that what you do is you just sink it so it's touching the back of the bait there now listen I can rub my hand look I can stroke it good boy good boy I'll take you for a walk in a minute there you go it doesn't catch but if a fish grabs that it pops and releases that hook point and they're hooked up. Angus asks us, what's your and Mike's favourite bass fishing lure? Well, obviously, it's the lure they call the last bass for us. But in all honesty, these blue and white, they're called super solid shads. The one we've got in the packet here, we've got loads of different colours, like all anglers, we've got too many colours. The blue and white we've done really, really well with. This is a 25 gram size. And why I like it is because 
it's a four inch lure okay so it's four inches but when i think about it most sandals the average sandal not big lawns the average sandal is about that's right four inches long so i think that's sort of bite size for the average bass of three to six pounds i'm going to say that sort of so i've had bigger ones on it don't get me wrong but three to six pounds boat or shore so if any of you shore fishermen beginners are out there and you want to know what we're using we're going to have different lures of course you are this is the first one that generally goes on the blue and white shad and it's nice bite-sized lure so if you're if you're doing that that gives you some sort of a guide doesn't it we're not selling them you know we, we, we um buy them from the tackle shops buy them from the tackle shops now i'm not a lover of braid have i got my mic on smith where's the mic Oh, he's put it over there. No, I've got it. I do not love a braid, I will say. It's great for bite sensitivity when it's tight. When it's loose and blows around, it's a living nightmare, especially if it goes around other angles, lines, rod tops, leads, booms, oh, especially boat fishing. If you keep it tight and you keep tight to it, really good stuff. The one I've used is, is this called Sidewinder Silk. I've had several different makes, and this one, I'm just saying I'm not a lover of it. I'm still not a lover of it, but this one I've used a lot. I found it wears really well. It says here, this is about the average size, you need 50 or 40. It comes on a 250 yard spool. Now you could, if you wanted to, most anglers you've been fishing for a while, they're gonna lose a bit of line mono, they'll have space on top of the spool because they're fine diameter braid. So you could probably top off, you could get a 250 yard spool. If you're not a big caster, you could go out somewhere on a playing field, measure off this, split it, in other words, make 125 yards each put on two different reels or on one reel keep this as a top-up spare it's what we in fishing terms call a top-up it's where you top up your line with a different breaking strain so this is to tell the aficionados it is uh, 0.26 millimeters it means nothing to me obviously i'm of an age where 0.26 millimeters means nothing it's 40 pound breaking strain it's good stuff i've enjoyed using it I haven't enjoyed using some of the other stuff, and I've got away pretty well with this. I've got it on boat reels, I've got it on beach reels, it's on that beach reel I showed you earlier on. So if you did want to try one, give it a try other braids if you want, by all means. But all I'm saying is, this is the one I've been using, and I've got on my reels. Right, let's take a look at some rods. Right, now this is the travel rod. We've both got one, Mike, we both ended up with a nice travel rod each. We've both used them. They're light. Mike likes it because when he goes backpacking, he can put this in and he can catch quite halfway decent fish with it. This is a Nomura. It's quite a nice one. Hiro or Hero and then Gobbledygook. I've got six feet five written on here. 1.56 meters. 10 to 30 grams is what it throws. We tend to throw pretty much anything on it. Um, three stroke 10 pounds. So I suppose that means the line from three to 10 pounds. Who would use three pound line? But it comes in this little pouch. We use it a lot. Mike likes it for um, mackerel fishing, stuff like that. I like it for pike, pike as well. Uh, so I use it for fresh water and for sea fishing as well, obviously. It's a four piece, it's like a five piece. I've probably sat on it in the car and it's a 12 piece. No, it's a five piece. I thought it came with two tips. That's why I said it's a four piece, okay? So it goes together just like this. It's got nice little rings on it. It's got a screw winch fitting here at the top, screws down into the handle to push the reel. As you tighten this, it, it pulls it down into it. And it is, it's just, sorry, long, wrong one. It's just a nice rod and reel to use. And of course, it's got the tip there. You see the tip ring. I can't get it because I'll be outside the cabin. It's, it's quite pokey. You'd be surprised with this. I've used it pipe fishing. I've had some good sort of eight, nine pipe, pound pike on it, and it's really pretty good. And these rings, they don't, you think they tangle with a line loop, especially with bread, they don't. Now it's not a rod to be abused, it's a rod to be appreciated and used, but it has got a lot of backbone with it. And we've been pleased, and it's so light, it's unbelievable. It's such a pleasure to use. So there you go, let's see if it's got anything else written on here. We both use these, we both love them. There is no chance of reading that. It is indeed a high row or, or just a Nomura high row, high row, one, two, three, four, five piece. And that's a good one for mackerel, pollock, bass, just general lure fishing. Haven't done a lot of bait fishing with it because obviously bait fishing you need bigger leads. I wouldn't want to break it. It's a nice, nice rod to use. Right, now this is an LRF rod. I'm not really into LRF. 
If there's any LRF small, tiny little fish, they might end up on a bigger hook for a bigger fish with me, but they come and LRF is light rock fishing. Very, very, very fine tip, if you can see that. Very, very fine. Very easy to break, very easy. It's used normally for catching tiny little weensy fish, just an amusing way of fishing, but I've used this for carp and had some great fun. I've used it for wrasse, uh, I've used it off the boat fishing as well, you know, catching stuff like black bream. It buckles it over like you wouldn't believe. I've even used it catching small pike. This one is seven and a half feet, made by Rockstar, or it's called a Rockstar. Again, it's got that screw which fitting is part of the butt. It's not an independent fitting here. The actual base of the uh, handle screws up to hold the reel up there. It's got a white tip there for obviously visual bites if you're using it with bait, or I like it for bait fishing because it's so good. And nice rings on it, nice finish. I've caught a lot of freshwater fish on this because I've messed around a lot, you know. But it's a nice, very, again, very, very light. Um, I don't know whether it says weight. Some people say, what weight does it say? Hang on a minute, boys. Let me go and look in the torch. It looks like it says three to 16 gram, grams, grams, so it's light. I've used bigger lures than that on it. But you can have some fun with these. So it's an LRF rod, two piece. I don't know what they go for now, not an arm, arm and leg, but they're quite a nice rod, as you can see, nicely finished. And again, most of these ones I'm talking about are my lighter, you know, not heavy rods, just the ones we have fun with, of course. A lot of you guys are going to know this one. This would be my ultimate favourite rod. You know why I like it? Because it's different, it's white. It's a Nomura Kanji. I can even read this, it's got big letters on it. Uh, casting weight 40 to 80 grams, 2.40 meters long. I don't know whether it's all carbon, it smacks as though it's got some glass in there because it's very nice to use. I've used it for pike, I've used it for everything, everything, everything. Um, it's, it's just a good, all, when I say everything, obviously not tench and stuff like that, but you know, lure wise and bait fishing wise, I've used it on the sea, I've used it off the beach, put it on my boat, high sea drifter, I've used it off of there. Uh, ras fishing, great for ras fishing. I guess it's just a rod that sort of covers all seasons. In fact, if I had to choose a rod, when they say you just have one rod, one rod, I guess it's going to be this one. The old white kanji, you've seen it in films, those regulars that follow us. Um, and I only got it really because I like white, I like being awkward, I like being different. Other people say, oh my god, the, the fish are going to see you now. No, they're not, they're 40 yards away. They got the brain of half a pea. That's half a P, not Arthur P. Apologies to anybody out there who's called Arthur P. I bet all his family are like the same, like peas in a pod. So there you go, nice big rings. Basic rod, just a basic rod. Now, another one I've enjoyed using. This one, <coughs> I actually broke. <laughs> I can't take it apart for you, but I broke it by putting other rods on top of it in my estate car. Too much weight, and I've made the mistake of putting the light rod on the bottom and the heavy rods and all the gear, umbrellas, hold rules, all on the top. But I managed to splice it in here and I've whipped over the top so it is a one-piece rod. If, if anything, it seems to have made it better. And again, this is a lure rod. We we're talking all these are sort of small, messing about lure type rods. And this one is, the trouble is, I've got no light to see anything with. It is a Nomura. 2.1 meters, 10 to 35 gram weight, casting weight. Again, I've cast bigger weights than that with them and got away with it without breaking it, and it's been repaired. Nice big rings. It's got rather than, how can I show you? Uh, let me just show you for beginners the distance. See that ring there? It's on a sort of spring leg, if that, if that makes sense, right? It's got you know movement there. This type of ring, I can't take it to bits. I can't even put it out the window. I can't even turn it sideways for you. Hopefully you'll see that there has arched rings here, but it has the third support there. Um, and I think that's good, you know. The others up here, up there, you might, might not be able to see that, are the single ones, but the butt ring is a, ah, there you go. The others have nice inserts, and the butt ring is very, very strong. Again, I like using this one. Now this is a reverse. Some of those others have a winch fishing, winch fishing? A winch fitting where you screw from the bottom and it pushes the real seat, which is, so beginners know, there's the real seat. It pushes it up into the top. This one's reversed. You lock it into the bottom, 
unscrew it to the top like that, pinch it in and then close it down. Okay, now there's very, very slight disadvantage I've found with, I'm going to call it, what can we call it, a, I'll be careful I put this, a top screw fitting. So the thing with a top screw is the fact that you're casting and you're working a lure a lot, and I have found this gradually does come a little bit loose, you know, whereas if you've got one that locks from the bottom, you know, it screws up from the bottom, your hand is in front of it, and the actual motion of casting and jigging your lure doesn't undo that. Look, you can grind it up as tight as you want, you'll probably be okay, but you don't want to overcook any fittings, do you, really? So there you go, guys. That's another type of rod. It shows you some rods, some bits of tackle, and I really enjoy doing it. If you guys out there, if you have enjoyed this little tackle talk, as I say, we don't sell it, that's just generally the stuff you will see on my films, that's what I'm using, I'm not vlogging it. If you enjoyed that, let me know, put it in the comments page, we could do maybe terminal tackle in here, something like that, or different types of boat gear. I don't mind doing it, let us know. We'll see you next time on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, I am going to blow my candles out in a while, get on home, I'm actually going to prepare myself to fold up the pizza and see if I can not eat it on the way home, it's going to be tough. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on our channel, hit the bell if you want to be notified when the films go up, and don't forget we're putting a few midweek ones up now, so if you're not on notification, you're going to miss the films completely, you won't know what's gone up there. This one may well be a midweek one. So good little review of stuff there. Also, don't forget, if you want to support us, there it is. Tell you some fishing show clothing. Mike does all that. I don't do any of that. I, I don't do Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. I give Mike pictures and he does it for me. I wouldn't know what to do. So hit his subscribe bell on TA Outdoors. Go across and have a look at some of his other shelters he's built. If you want to see the famous, the world famous pallet cabin, the entire build, that's on there in one film. We've probably done a dozen films at different stages of building it. But there is one film up there where you can see the whole build from the base level, the sides, everything, 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 all on one film. We'll see you guys next time and hopefully a fish or two. Well, I don't know. I've got to pack all this up now, haven't I? Who's going to do the washing up? Smith, just a moment. I've got a job for you.